Our story begins quite removed in Whoville so far away. Our story unfolds, unfortunately, on a very unfortunate day. You see, this morning when the world awoke, no one was in any mood to joke. But one was still happy and bubbled with joy, for he played with life as he played with a toy. He would dance to his rhythm, be light on his feet. He would sing to his tune, which was gentle and sweet. For he was the Grinch and jester, would he be, to make her people laugh and fill them with glee. He had a special helper, as any Grinch should, a friend by name of Max, a piece of talking wood. He carried Max all over. The two were quite a pair. The few lifed as a carnival of fun filled festive fair. But today, when the Grinch broke out on his song, how could he know that something was wrong? When he started his routine and strutted on the stage, how could he have known that the mayor was in a rage? What did the colt say when he coughed? <coughs> Excuse me, a little horse. But nobody giggled, nobody yuckled, nobody laughed, and nobody chuckled. The Grinch has lost his jingle. The mayor yelled in dismay. His bells no longer tingle. That's all I have to say. Then without thoughts and on a whim, the mayor decided to banish him. Banish me, mayor? Don't send me away. Why, why is your mayor highness so down this fine day? But the mayor gave no answer. He said nothing more than he pointed his finger towards Ed's door. The Grinch walked out slowly and a tear fell from his face for he never left Whoville, never wandered from this place. And once outside, the Grinch cried. This is so funny, I say. You were funny last week, you're funny today. It seemed a nasty rumor, but laughter is now dead. The world has lost its sense of humor. Max sadly said. So off they went, the fearless two, to bring back laughter back to you. Their journey was long, and their journey was rough, but the Grinch was strong, and the Grinch was tough. They looked far and near, they looked far and wide, they looked everywhere that laughter might hide. They searched in every corner, under rocks and up in trees. They peered into the heavens and gazed deep beneath the seas. They looked in vain for flowers, they heard no songs of birds, but they saw lots of mappy faces and heard some bitter words. Every who here is so moody, and every who here is so mean. I must confess that who city is the saddest place I've ever seen. Maybe someone here can tell me, maybe someone here might know. How come the who's aren't laughing? How come spirits aren't so low? Ask Jack who? Max motioned. I'll give it a go. Why are you not laughing, sir? I'd really like to know. It's kind of hard to laugh or joke when you're unemployed and completely broke. I have no job, but I have no money. So tell me, Mr. Grinch, what's so funny? Oh, Max, I fear it's much worse than I thought. Is laughter something those people forgot? Ask Jack who with a briefcase blowing smoke in the air. Okay, Said the Grinch. I'll try and never try. Seems you don't believe in laughing, sir. Can you tell me why? Laugh? Huh, that's the best laugh I've had in years. The world's not a funny place, it's filled, it's filled with pain and tears. Don't you read the paper, it's all in black and white. Everything is going wrong and jokes won't make it right. I have no time for laughter, I have no time for you. I'm sorry, that's the way things are, so there's nothing you can do. There must be someone somewhere with a smile on their face. There must be someone cheerful in this cold and lonely place. Say, look at that tall building. Maybe we'll find an answer there. What about that who? Asked Max. Little Cindy Lou who in bed. That who looks so fragile with a bandage on her head. Hi, young Cindy Lou who. How do you do? I wonder if you can tell me, how come laughter's not with you? 
Here I lie, I have a tumor, and you ask me where is my sense of humor. I've been very sick. I'm so tired of trying. I don't feel like laughing. I feel like crying. Oh. Instead of making teardrops fall, I make them disappear. Whenever I feel like crying, I smile hard instead. I turn my sadness upside down and stand it on its head. When I get sad or lonesome, or when I feel depressed, that's when I sing my loudest and dance my very best. So won't you try it, Cindy Lou Who? Won't you laugh with me? We'll start up very slowly with a tiny tee hee hee. So he sang his funny song. Dore, do dore. Laughter's coming. And he walked his way. funny walk. Oh my god, you're so funny. <laughs> and he danced his funny dance. <laughs> and he talked his funny talk. He leaped into the edge door and hugged the mayor. In between, he said, Oh my, Mr. Mayor, you won't believe what we've seen. Laughter isn't missing. Why, it isn't dead. Max and I have found it. It's been hiding inside everyone. It's buried deep within. Laughter's like a seedling, waiting patiently to sprout. All it takes is just a push to make it pop right out. Don't keep it in prison or locked out of sight. Quickly release it. It won't hurt or bite. So the mayor said, I'll give it a try. I'll give it a go. And all of a sudden, out popped a hoe. <laughs> That's it! Yelled the Grinch. Just let it flow! <laughs> and it flowed and it flowed and it flowed. Mr. Grinch, you've done it! You've helped us save the day. You've brought back love and laughter. You've helped us find a way. And when the Grinch heard these words, he smiled and started singing. He somersaulted in the air, and his bells again were ringing. Laughter's back, and that's the end.